Hey guys, welcome back to another Swift tutorial and I'm back from my break which was, you know, like a week but yeah, I'm back and today I'm going to be talking about jagged arrays and how to use them in Swift and why they are very useful So jagged arrays are actually quite simple basically they're just an array inside of another array um, so if I just go to the view controller so it's basically um, like this if we go here and we create our array, so let's do let drag array is equal to, and what we'll do is an array of an array of ints. So uh, to initialize this, all we're going to do is just um, create uh, oh capital. Um, we're just going to initialize it like this and like that I believe if I just build it okay yep no errors and basically the reason why these are so useful is because it basically allows you to create a table so uh, I don't know what I'm gonna use so let's just say we want to get a table for uh, storing some data so basically uh, if we just initialize this with some values so let's just say one two three that's our first row and then our second row can be like three, seven, five, and our last row can be like seven, uh, two, or seven, four, and six. So basically, to reference a number in a um, what is this? Extra arguments at positions two and three and cool. Uh, oh, forgot to put a comma there. So. This should work, yep. And to reference this, so basically what we can do is if we do uh, print shaded array, and the first one we do, this is going to be the row, um, so it's going to be picking which one of this, and let's just say we want it from the first row, which is zero, and then the second one is the um, column, so let's just say we want the last column, which is two. So basically what we've created here is a table basically and the table goes like this so this is the first row this is the second row and this is the last row and you can see this is what we reference and now if we want to choose something so if we wanted to get um, this value which is what we've got it would be the zero row uh, since it's the first row and it would be the last item which is two in our case so if we print this we should get three as our result and that's just one way. So another way where this could be very useful is, um, let me think of an example. So let's just say we had something like a uh, mean table, which is used to calculate the mean of some numbers. So you can see that gets free. But in a mean table, basically what we have is we have the values on one side. So it'd be like 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, and this is the values. I guess I can give this, um, give this values uh, labels as well. And then we also have the frequency of those values. So here, if I just do x, and then I do frequency, and the frequency would be something like uh, two, five, oh, five, um, four and seven like this so this is let's just say x is the number of um number of people in a family or something like that um so this is the amount and then this is like the frequency so there would be two families with 10 children um, five families with 20 children four families with 30 children um seven families with 40 children i know those are unrealistic numbers but it's just a, a guide and then to work out the frequency, uh, the mean, all you have to do is you have to work out f of x. So that's just this times this, which in our case is going to be 20, 100, 120, 280, like that. So basically this is the table we've just created out here. And now what we want to do for the last row, this is where we calculate the totals of all of this. So we have to calculate the total of frequency, which would be... Uh, 11 and 18 and then we also have to calculate the frequency of 
f of x, which I can't, actually I can do it in my head, so that's 400, 520, like that. So, yeah, and now to work out the mean, we just have to do 520 divided by 18, uh, which is, oh, let me just bring out the calculator, 520 divided by 18, uh, we'll just say 28.8. So yeah, I know that was a bit of a long example, but now I'm going to show you guys why we can use jagged arrays for this. So let's just create a new jagged array. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but that's basically what it is. So a jagged array, and let's just call this mean table. And once again, let's initialize it like we used up here. And let's use it. So here, what we can do is we can put these values in. So first row is 10 to 20 and uh, second row 25 100 uh, third row 30 4 and 120 and finally we have um, the last row which is I forgot to put a comma there last row which is going to be 40 70 uh, 7 and 280. So these are our values. You'll see I haven't actually put in this final row since this is calculated in the total and working out the answer. So you can see what I've done here and now to work out the total all we would have to do is we would have to loop through this item so we would loop through the first index since that's a rows and keep getting the first item, uh, second item but the first index. So let's do this. Let's first create a variable uh, frequency f total equals zero um, while var i is equal to zero while i is not equal to and let's do um, mean table dot count since we're only looking at the first one this is the number of rows so we can do mean table dot count and plus one for i there and we'll just do f total plus equals to mean mean table i one now we're referencing this so now we can do this again actually i could use a for loop but i'll just leave it like this so i'll do this again now and if i do it for the um fx total equals zero i equals zero while i is not equal to and then here we're actually trying to loop through this column so we'll do the same thing with mean dot table mean table dot count i plus six one but this time we'll do fx total is equal to mean table i two so now we're referencing this and now finally to work out the average all we have to do is we'll just print um, fx total divided by f total and hopefully you guys are following along but oh why is that giving me 15 that's quite weird let's just print both things and see if we've got the same thing uh, so we'll just do a bit of debugging here f total and fx total so we got 280 and 18 so the fx total was correct but the other one wasn't how has that happened oh i know why we forgot to do plus equals all right that's just a small error on my part but yeah now we should see that it prints the correct thing 28 and since it's not a flow it's not going to print the 28.8 but you get it and yeah this is just a useful way of working things out now you can also do it so that uh, you didn't have the f of x available and you just did something like uh, for each one you could just do something like so let's say we work on our first row and we didn't have this uh, 20 so what we would do is we just do mean table referencing the first row and referencing the last item actually you wouldn't have the last item so what you would do is you have to do mean title mean table zero dot append and then here we just do mean table uh, mean table zero and reference the first one so again this number 
and plus mean table zero one. So reference oh it should be a times. But yeah, so if I put this in here now and remove this, then it should give us the same result. Oh should give us the same result. And yeah, so you can see it gives us 28. But yeah, I know this video is quite long, but um, I'm just trying to explain how jagged arrays are useful for processing data. And I know you can use structs for this, but that's a little more complicated. And this is a bit more, um, I don't know what the word is, but a bit more, uh, I don't know. But it's just a bit more simple, if, if that's to say. Or it's a bit more, it's a bit quicker, that's what I mean to say. You don't have to create the structs and things like that. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and obviously this can just be anything, you can put a string in here, you can just do anything, but you can just create a table of a bunch of values and put them in here like this. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in a future tutorial. This was how you use Jagged Arrays in Swift.